Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Taurus November 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Anyway, first thing up is as far as November goes, the Sun will be in Scorpio from the 1st until the 22nd. So the 7th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. There could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention on legal matters, legalities, open adversaries, the grandmother, perhaps a grandmother, perhaps I should say, <laughs> relationships, um, negotiation, and compromise. Now, given this is Scorpio energy, this could be done with a lot of Scorpio emotional intensity, resourcefulness, incisiveness, a lot of investigative uh, energy and probing, and also the ability to go beyond subterfuge and superficiality and, uh, and really with a lot of power, one and one of power and control, this could be about a lot of focus and power of really um, concentration of energy on, um, on really getting power perhaps over open adversaries and in legal situations. Could, these, this energy could also be done with a lot of surreptitious energy and very secretively. Now, um, could also shine the light, so to speak, on a Scorpio uh, open adversary. And it could be somebody that, I um, mean, there could really be a strong spotlight on this person at this time. It could be a Scorpio sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Scorpio-like characteristics. Anyway, next thing up is, um, this, as far as November goes, the sun will be in Sagittarius from the 22nd until the 30th. So the 8th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, uh, focus and attention on sex, uh, sexual and intimate relationships, insurance, taxes, uh, an inheritance even, emotional, moral, and monetary support, shared resources, even psychology, and perhaps even occult supernatural astrological matters. And this will be even more reinforced and accentuated if this person actually is an astrologer that's having uh, this this going on this transit now um, it could also be a strong focus uh, and also on regeneration and rebirth and given this is Sagittarius uh, energy this could be done uh, with a lot of Sagittarius like expansiveness enthusiasm exuberance a lot of positive energy and a lot of uh, philosophical energy as well, especially if there's matters connected with making some major change or transformation. And also perhaps deal if the person has to deal with a death. Um, could be something um, and, and, and also matters connected with death as well. Now, this could energy, this could, these eighth house matters can also be done with a lot of jocularity, optimism, effervescence, real adventurous energy. And especially if in matters if you're in an intimate or sexual relationship with someone, but also a lot of truth seeking and really, uh, especially if there's some kind of mystery or something going on with an inheritance or an insurance matter, and you're trying to get the, the truth out of it, this is a time where you might really be emphasizing and accentuating, trying to focus on getting to uh, the truth and, and what's voracious in these matters. Now, anyway, um, Next thing up is there will be a new moon in Scorpio on November 7th. So the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, uh, this could be, this could signify in some cases a new Scorpio uh, provocative deep, uh, could be a deep relationship. It could be with a Scorpio sun, moon or ascendant or simply one that embodies Scorpio like characteristics. Um, it could also be something where you might begin like a new Scorpio type business partnership. It could be anything Scorpio related, such as embalming or something with coroner work, astrological, um, occult, supernatural works, uh, psychology, anything that or some kind of investigation or forensics. This could be anything that could be Scorpio uh, related. And it might be a time where you might just collaborate a new, a new time where maybe you collaborate with someone on trying to get to the bottom of some mystery or some new negotiations begin to open up with a lot of Scorpio like emotional intensity and uh, also too 
This could also be about the initiation or beginning of using resourcefulness in order to, in, in really going beyond uh, really subterfuge and superficiality to deal with matters in uh, really with open adversaries. So, and, and also trying to come, maybe a new period of trying to compromise with um, with a lot of that Scorpio-like willful and intractable, uh, really, I should say that emotional intensity. So anyway, the next, um, the next thing up is um, there will be a, a full moon in Gemini on November 23rd. So the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, well, uh, Taurus, you might become simply full, exasperated, or tired at somebody. Maybe that you, um, maybe that you may have valued, or it could be someone in a monetary situation or figures prominently in your possessions and resources. It could be you might get tired, full, exasperated, perhaps that maybe uh, somebody that might be overly mercurial, vacillating, overly loquacious, maybe all talk and no action in some second house matter. Again, maybe connected with a monetary situation. Maybe it could be over your possession, just somebody that's prominent in your resources or possessions um, or income generated. In some cases, this may be the completion or culmination of some Gemini uh, money related uh, matter or venture. It could be a writing that maybe is completed at this time that may uh, that might be making you money. Uh, it could be something where you were doing something else Gemini related, such as something with dexterity, such as doing some auto or refrigeration mechanical work that might come to a completion or culmination. Now also too, um, this could be given that this is like this full like Gemini type energy coming in, you might be at this time inundated with so many, maybe um, it could be do, trying to do maybe too many things in order to make money and, and really having to emphasize all kinds of versatility, dexterity, and maybe just spreading yourself too thin. It could be tired of maybe of yourself, just uh, really spreading yourself too thin in terms of trying to generate income, which might really, um, which you might dissipate yourself through lack of some kind of unifying purpose uh, at this time. And uh, in some cases, too, this could be about a revelation or unveiling of a Gemini-like possession that you might uncover or find. It could be something like, like a book or some kind of communication device, like a walkie-talkie or something, or a computer, uh, some, maybe something that might be Gemini-related. And it could also be about that re revelation or unveiling if you've had money taken from you. Remember, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, could be connected with thieves. It could be about a revelation or unveiling of a thief that, may, that um, might have taken some money or some funds uh, from you. Anyway, next thing up. Uh, Mercury will be in Aquarius. I'm sorry, Mercury will be in Sagittarius in November. It will be retrograde from like the 17th until the 30th. So the eighth house is will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, this could manifest perhaps in having very veritable, candid communications, perhaps with an intimate, uh, someone you're in an intimate relationship or sexual relationship with. And also, Given it's going to be retrograde it could, for, for about half the month during that time, you may be going through some review of some philosophical, maybe uh, discussions with some, maybe someone you're in an intimate relationship with. Uh, it could be a sexual relationship or maybe even someone you're in some kind of shared resources situation with. And it could also be um, also matters regarding uh, maybe thinking, uh, re revealing your thoughts re re about matters, maybe uh, philosophies regarding uh, deaths uh, as well, and maybe dealing with crisis situations as well. And remember, as I've stated in previous videos, Mercury is not just about communications. It could also be about siblings. And it could be that um, Sagittarius siblings might figure prominently in maybe a crisis or some kind of major change or transformation 
uh, that you make. It could be a Sag Sagittarius Sun Moon Ascendant people or simply ones that embody Sagittarius-like characteristics. And whether their, uh, whether their effect on these matters I talked about are going to be beneficial or to your detriment can, of course, depend a lot upon aspects. A good aspect to Jupiter, uh, for example, can be more uh, auspicious, a negative one. Uh, to it and also a lot of negative aspects to it might actually be more to your detriment in terms of maybe if you're trying to deal with a crisis or maybe uh, make some major change or transformation in your life. Now, another thing is it could also be at a, a time too where you might find yourself more voluble in talking more regarding matters connected with the, not just transformation but taxes insurance and shared resources and a lot of veritable truth coming out speaking very bluntly and candidly uh, about these matters uh, as well so anyway hold on a minute people sorry about that anyway next thing up Venus will be uh, in Libra uh, during uh, in November and it's going to be retro retrograde from like the first until the 16th so at this time well this could be uh, a time where you might uh, for Taurus you may value um, more compromise tact and diplomacy in your daily routine and also in work related and health related matters it could be about a lot of equitable and balanced spending uh, in six house matters such as matters pertaining to your health uh, your employment perhaps and even pets if you do have them and also given it's going to be retrograde for about half the month if you're unattached to us you might find yourself going back to uh, perhaps a Libra uh, relationship that you had that might have been very prominent more in your daily routine it might have been someone that you worked with uh, previously or it could be about maybe doing something uh, and generating income making going back to making money that you did that was Libra related such as doing something with the law like working as an attorney a bailiff or a judge or something with negotiation or arbitration working as a uh, referee or doing something artistic uh, going back to doing something artistic and also uh, this may manifest in having to spend money on uh, on Libra sometimes Libra health related uh, matters it could be something with like the kidneys or lower back I have issues with those I have Taurus rising I have Libra on the cusp of my sixth house in my natal chart I also have Jupiter and Libra in the sixth house of my natal chart in conjunct my ascendant so you could do the math but anyway I hope that these things don't happen to me at this time but anyway um and also it could be about the enjoyment perhaps of playing maybe a libra like game with an aunt or an uncle it could be something like a law and order game or like s alone or svu or doing some like people like a people's court uh board game or anything that could be uh connected uh with the law so anyway uh something and if there if there is a people's court uh, board game i should uh say so anyway um, well, the next thing up is uh, Mars will be in Aquarius from uh, November 1st until like the 15th. And so the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, uh, Taurus, you might become rather uh, angry over unusual idiosyncratic bizarre behavior, perhaps from a uh, from a dominant, the dominant parent, which is often the father. It could be an authority figure maybe even somebody prominent in your career or somebody that might have some strong impact on your reputation public image uh, it could be something too where the situation with a dominant parent or authority figure might be more acrimonious and contentious than usual and also you might be expressing more unpredictable angry outbursts uh really in matters pertaining uh, to your career or something involving your reputation and public image and putting a lot of erratic and sporadic energy perhaps into attaining some kind of career ambitions and really gaining uh, trying to gain uh, maybe a greater stature in life social status and even notoriety and recognition uh, on another end of this this could be about putting a lot of energy and vitality 
into something Aquarius related, uh, something that uh, could be computers, electronics, even innovation, aerospace, astronomy, astrology, that might play a role in giving you maybe some more public recognition and exposure and notoriety. And if you're unattached, you might be having, uh, it could be a sexual, um, some kind of interlude, sexual interlude with an Aquarius sun, moon, or ascendant that might help you, might be playing some role, maybe prominent in your career, uh, perhaps, or maybe it plays a role in maybe improving your stature in life or something, this person, something might be involved, uh, 10th house related one way or another. So anyway, um, Next thing up is, um, as far as November goes, Mars will be in Pisces from like the 15th until the 30th. So the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, Taurus, you might become somewhat angry over perhaps a, de a deceptive, duplicitous, lethargic, indolent, uh, perhaps a friend, an acquaintance, even a stepchild, if applicable. Uh, this could also be really... Um, Putting a lot of uh, energy, perhaps, into Pisces-related things that could be tied into uh, to your goals and aspirations. It could be something like uh, the metaphysical, which includes astrology, poetry, dancing, uh, maybe fantasy or fiction writing, photography, chemistry. Something that could be Pisces-related pharmaceutical work. Could also be, in some cases, could manifest in attempting to fulfill a sexual fantasy with a friend or acquaintance, and in some isolated cases, even group sex, uh, if you're unattached at this time. This could be also about a lot of self-sacrificing and compassionate energy and very humanitarian energy expressed at that at this time. And it could be with friend, uh, helping friends and acquaintances, and even matters in group-related matters, and even in social media. Media, uh, perhaps now but at this time too when Mars is in Pisces you may feel more lethargic and feel like you want to put more energy into loafing as in relaxing as opposed to taking action and this of course could have an impact perhaps on you know, like if you're trying to attain some goal or aspiration or you're trying to do things for your future perhaps or something in a group or organization related so be careful during this time Next thing up, Jupiter will be in Scorpio um, as far as November goes from the 1st till the 8th. Uh, so the 7th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time for Taurus. Well, uh, as I've talked about previously, Jupiter can be uh, paradoxical. It can be very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. And in some cases, it could expand and enlarge surreptitious uh, nefarious and even manipulative behavior and this could be evident perhaps in matters uh, with a significant other or a grandmother perhaps uh, someone you're in a business partnership with and just others in general uh, in your life people that you're in and perhaps important relationships with however this could also be about uh, very fortuitous perhaps for making a transformation in terms of a significant uh, relationship or significant other. It could be very fortuitous for that if you're unattached at this time, Taurus. And also going beyond subterfuge and superficiality and, and really, um, and really, I guess you could say in some cases it could, um, as far as open adversaries uh, go and if like say if one you feel like one ex like is trying to make some compromise or reconciliation you'll have a better idea to see if they're actually if they're tell or if they're being truthful or they're being fallacious or what have you be able to be very perhaps penetrate uh any kind of duplicity as far as that goes better than usual at this time and also about going into perhaps a profound philosophy uh, over relationships and partnerships and dealing with open enemies uh, during uh, this time as well and, um, and and maybe even compromise as well such as being able to compromise in a situation without compromising your beliefs just something that you will find on a very deep and profound level perhaps next thing up Jupiter will be in Sagittarius as far as November goes from the 8th until the 30th. So the 8th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. 
this could be a time Taurus where you might have, I mean, as I've talked about uh, previously, that Jupiter, again, could be a very paradoxical, it can be very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency and proclivity to enlarge and expand. And it could also, it, it sometimes it might expand, maybe in this case, maybe over exuberance, over, and it could be over enthusiasm and optimism, and maybe to the point, or an even self-righteous behavior, and even and to a point where it, it could be over matters connected with making a major change in your life or dealing with a crisis. It could be where a self-righteous be or feeling that your way is the only way maybe to deal with these things and over philosophies as well and religion. And it's important maybe to be able to see other people's points of view. And, and Taurus even by itself, and as I've stated before, I mean, having Taurus rising, it's a lot of very immutable and tractable energy anyway. So it's very important to just try to maybe keep yourself open up to others' points of views regarding these eighth house matters at this time. Now also, this could be about this this could be very fortuitous for finding out the truth unveiling that truth regarding a, a death it could be an inheritance if there's some kind of mystique or mystery surrounding this thing around surrounding these things you have a better opportunity to do so at this time or maybe even an insurance matter this could also be about getting very fortuitous perhaps for uh getting um more uh, moral, emotional, even monetary support and being in the sign of Lux Sagittarius, it could be very positive uh, for that. And maybe also luck making some kind of religious or uh, philosophical uh, change or transformation in one's life. Uh, so anyway, um, and also could increase the libido a little bit at this time. And Jupiter being in Sagittarius, we know Sagittarius hardly does anything on a very uh, on a low scale it could be about really about expanding a lot of exuberance and enthusiasm and ebullience in matters connected with sex uh, at this time uh, so anyway hold on a minute people sorry about that again next thing up Saturn will be in Capricorn uh, this month still, so the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, well, you may be dealing uh, with more restrictions and limitations than usual. It could be oh, as far as uh, traveling abroad, even publishing at this time. Things that are connected with higher education or long distance traveling could be making you feel somewhat despondent and melancholy. And also, this may manifest perhaps in having to take care of a sickly or debilitated in-law, a grandchild, maybe even a foreigner. Could be someone you know well, perhaps at a religious congregation, and that could be making you feel somewhat dejected and sad as well. But it could also be about getting structure and discipline in at this time uh, in, in terms of your uh, f philosophies at this time, even in uh, religious matters uh, as well. And this could be also being very consistent, taking serious responsibility for matters connected with publishing uh, at this time. And... Uh, some cases you might be dealing with some kind of government restriction though in these matters as well since saturn is about could be about restriction in capricorn of course dealing with uh the government older people might be feeling figuring more prominently in your philosophical outlook and publishing matters at this time even in abstract thinking as well at this time tour so anyway next thing up Uranus will be uh, in Taurus uh, as far as November goes from the 1st until the 6th. So the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Uh, well, for Taurus, um, this could be a period where you may be making some uh, unusual change in your appearance. Uh, it could be a time, too, where you might be showing more unorthodox or innovative qualities and maybe even more unpredictable than usual. There could also be, though, uh, to be also, also important to be careful of a little greater propensity for an electric shock at this time because, of course, Uranus can be uh, about uh, about electricity and also maybe dealing with some kind of nerve issues at this time especially if you're already dealing with them um, I'm, and I, I deal with them anyway I mean my chart I have Uranus almost exactly conjunct my sixth house 
uh, cusp. And uh, so, I mean, I have been dealing uh, with some nerve damage during uh, the court for a good part of my life at this time. And if you already have some kind of indicators in your chart for that already, that in, that may reaffirm this. I mean, then, and if you're, and you're going through this energy with, you know, Uranus and Taurus and your first house being emphasized or what have you or if you're especially if this is actually this transit is actually conjunct your first house cusp or in your first house in your natal chart you have a you know this it's important to be careful during this time and if you're taking your precautions if you're dealing with electricity such as wearing those gloves that you're supposed to wear a lot of times if you're dealing like an electrician or dealing with wire electrical wiring and you need to do that so anyway and also, Taurus uh, friendships might figure prominently in your outlook on life at this time, more so than usual. They could be Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Taurus-like characteristics. You might feel uh, where you might want to make more of a unique uh, first impression more so than usual at this time and also it might find where you might be more in contact with actual uh, Uranus like people such as innovators people in aerospace astronomy astrology uh, in other esoteric subjects perhaps people that deal with computers or an electronics type career anyway next thing up Uranus will be in Aries um, as far as November goes from the 6th until the 30th. So the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. Well, Taurus, you might be dealing with um, some Aries of uh, friendships that might be driving you crazy. Remember, the 12th house is connected with mental illness. So figuratively speaking, it might be driving you crazy at this time. They could be Aries, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Aries-like characteristics. You might be experiencing more disruptions in your um, your sleep and your private life, which might be very sporadic and erratic right now and a lot of inconsistency with that. Uh, also dealing with perhaps Uranus uh, like hidden adversaries. It could be ones that uh, like in a Uranus type profession, such as, as an astrologer, uh, somebody in innovation, somebody that works with electronics, computers or aerospace, perhaps. And also showing a lot of humanitarian qualities, dealing with those less fortunate than yourself, such as the oppressed, the impoverished, the homeless, and the hungry. So those are some ways that this could uh, manifest. And really, given that you're talking about Uranus and the 12th house, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'd be restricted in ingenuity at this time. But what it could mean is that you're more about doing these things more in privacy uh, at this time. And given it's going to be uh, retrograde as well that is something to uh, understand that it's more inwardly direct it's not really where you're going to be expressing those qualities out really but it doesn't mean you can't it doesn't mean that you're not having you know you're, you're necessarily going to be completely restricted in innovative thing um, thoughts at this time and ideas so anyway Neptune uh, will be in Pisces still, so the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, Taurus, you might find uh, where perhaps um, where you, your friendships and acquaintances, they might be dissipating and dissolving at this time, uh, so to speak. I'm having actually this transit in my natal chart right now, and they're just like dissolving left and right. I basically, I, I, I'll be honest with you people, I virtually I have virtually no social life at this point in time. And as I stated before, the friendships are really just uh, completely, they're just dissolving and dissipating. I'm not saying that's going to be true for everybody that's dealing with this, but it, it certainly um, seems like it's manifesting that way for me. And also, Taurus, you might be dealing with more of a nebulous future, and one that might be really obscure and unclear more so than usual but on the positive end this can manifest in dealing with perhaps neptune like goals and aspirations it could be something for example with dancing poetry the metaphysical which can include astrology photography uh, chemistry something with water like oceanography perhaps doing something with pharmaceutical work something that could be pisces like but be careful at this time taurus that uh that false uh fallacious profits 
uh, you know, maybe steer, trying to steer you in the wrong direction or phony psychics or mediums trying to tell you to do this. And the reality might be is that they just could be trying to con you just to get your money. And, and really, they're not as um, accurate as maybe they may come across at this time and it's also more difficult to try to uh where friends friends might and acquaintances might be more nebulous and unclear and also uh you might be dealing with more duplicity and deception from those people as well and also people you may know in some kind of group club or organization last but not least Pluto will be in Capricorn still, so the ninth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. At this time, Taurus, you might be, some cases might be involved in some kind of covert uh, overseas government work if you're doing something with the government anyway, if you're already uh, employed by them. In some cases, I know a lot of you don't want me to say this, but I will say the, um, the dreaded D word uh, once again is that uh, you may actually experience an actual literal death of an in-law or a grandchild at this time, or if something happens with you, it could be through traveling uh, abroad, perhaps could be one uh, example and might increase the propensity of dying in another country. And also this could be about some kind of where things that are ninth house related might seem like they're just obliterated at this time. It could be something with maybe some religious belief or some kind of thing with higher education uh, at this time or maybe a philosophical belief. Now, also too, uh, remember Pluto can be about terrorism, so that could affect traveling abroad. I do believe that there may, that at least in some countries, that, that the government does have certain restrictions on maybe on, on places that are traveled perhaps due to terrorism. That's something you may want to look up, but if that be the case, you could be experiencing some of you out there, tourist people that where your where terrorism might actually really be impacting maybe your long distance journey prospects at this time and something that could be uh, w which really has to do with power uh, from the government now also this could be a time too where you might be making a major change or transformation in a religion and a philosophy and and something um it could be some kind of maybe higher education course uh, at this time as well and also perhaps dealing with power struggles with in-laws grandchildren or maybe someone in a religious congregation uh, it could be somebody maybe a foreigner uh, perhaps anything that could be ninth house uh, related at this time so anyway people uh, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Taurus November 2018 horoscope forecast. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Gemini November 2018 horoscope forecast. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.